Going live. Before. What if I say? Going live in three, two, one. Cooking with Debbie and friends. Hi, everybody. Cooking with Debbie and friends. Sing it, Travis. Some good food, talk about marriage and parenting too. So many budgeting and some recipes for life. Yeah. yeah, cooking with Debbie and friends. Hi, Tony. Hi, everybody. Hi, Cindy Castillo. Hi, Tony. Hi, Flora. Um, it's so good to see you here today. We're going to be celebrating Dia de los Muertos. Um, a lot of you are uh, familiar with it after the movie Coco came out. And it gave it just this resurgence of, of um, notice of what Dia de las Muertas was all about. And for those of you who don't know, hi, Debbie. Oh, she only has one bar. Hello from oh New Mexico. Well, you know, if you don't, if you're not able to, hi, Suzanne. If you're not able to see every show live, don't forget, you can go back and rewatch. In fact, we're going to, we know the Dodgers were playing last Tuesday when we had our big Halloween extravaganza. And um, Danny Wolf was here giving one movie after another after another. So we will be, um, I, we will be condensing that so that you can look at the movies to put in your Halloween queue. Because he was talking about movies anywhere from the 1930s up until 2020. He's talking 2020. about um, foreign ha hammer films, these horror movies. Uh, the guy is just a wealth of knowledge. So uh, very, very happy to have him on the show on Tuesday. So we're going to try to clip that down. So there's just all the movies so that you can queue it up, make it easy for you. Yeah, so it's a reminder. You can catch up with this anytime. Let's see who do we have. Hi, Richard and Anna Maria and yes, Sandra. Eva. Sandra Valls. How are you, Sandra? Sandra is having her big show on Saturday, Halloween. So yeah. since we're all staying in. I'm going to put that up right now. You guys, check this out. Doyers. Go Doyers. 7 p.m. Central, Playroom Karaoke. All you have to do is look that up. You mean the Dodgers are winning the All you have to do is look that up on uh, <laughs> Facebook. I want to see that again. Okay, hang on. We're going to put that image back up. <laughs> so those are our friends, Sandra and Connie Valls. A lot of you already follow them. They're having their big Halloween karaoke party. We're all staying in, right? Yes, we're all staying in on Halloween. Um, so um, Audrey and Patrick say hello. Hello, I saw your beautiful vegetables from your garden. I'm so jealous that you can have a garden. I live next to a quarry. We live in the desert. <laughs> Let's see, Cindy Castillo. Oh, movies, now you're talking my language. Cindy, you gotta go back and see that episode because there are so many fabulous movies. Um, so, um, Doyers, you mean when the Dodgers were winning the World, World Series? Yes, that's what we were talking about. Yes. So, um, uh, we encourage you if hey, you Lemieux. wanna go back. Hi, you. If you guys wanna, do we miss anybody? I don't know, but we didn't even do our show intro. Oh, I'm so sorry. I get excited. I start I talking. She starts looking at your comments. She's like, oh, my friends are here. My friends are in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> welcome to Cooking with Debbie and Friends. Cooking with Debbie and Friends is a chat show we do right here in our own kitchen with my handsome producer slash husband slash sous chef, sous -chef slash taster, yeah. <laughs> test taster. Right. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. with the exception of like some special events like the election and so on. Every Next Tuesday season. and Thursday at 7 p.m. We stream out to, to three Facebook channels and YouTube. So if you're on one of those channels, please comment because we'd love to say hi. And we stream to those channels so that we can chat with you and you can chat with each other. Sometimes it's like high school reunion time out here and it's just so much fun to see you all connecting. Yeah. And if you're on YouTube or even if you're not, please don't forget to subscribe so that we can you can get notifications. And also, I've been putting a lot of content that's exclusive just to YouTube and we're putting it on the website so you can go to cookingwithdebbieandfriends.com and search for all the PLR Pours segments, for example. So please uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel and that is just youtube.com forward slash mommy comic. That's me. That's my gang name. Sir. Hi, Miriam. So what are we doing tonight, Deb? Um, hi, Paula. I'm so glad that you're here. 
Tonight we're celebrating Dia de los Muertos. And the way you celebrate traditionally, traditionally Dia de los Muertos is you would go to the cemetery and you would take the foods of and drinks of people that you loved and who have passed away and you put them right there um, on the gravestone. You would you know, connect with family and friends, you would sing, you would talk, you would laugh. Um, but um, we aren't taking this food, of course, to the cemetery. We are going to um, make it and enjoy it here, and we've already made some and shared it with neighbors and friends. So. I hope we're sharing more of this with the friends, too, because if you leave this in the house, I will eat it. <laughs> we also have some sense. traditional uh, pan dulce, which is Mexican bread. You can pick that up at a Mexican bakery. It's a little too early to look for the skull bread, but closer to November 2nd, which is... Uh, the actual holiday, they will start having the skull bread. It's really complicated to make. I wouldn't even try it, but I would go to a Mexican bakery so you could pick Bond up a loaf. With it. You yeah. know, what? I heard a, a commercial the other day on the way home, and they were talking about Hi, all, all the Dia de los Muertos um, things that you can buy for your for your uh, remembrance and celebrations. So it was just kind of odd. You would never hear that like in the Midwest, but they were right. talking about a lot of the things that we've been talking about here yeah. and that Pilar talks about in her yeah her and the marigolds are part of um, part of the Dia de los Muertos they would take the the leaves and they would sprinkle the leaves so that the souls could journey from where they are to earth one one night and they would come and see their relatives so they would journey on this this um, petal strewn um, bridge mm -hmm. And the petals were from marigolds, and that's what we have here in our arrangements. And the so, actual day of Dia de los Muertos you, is... No, you did not miss it, Flora. It's actually like a two- or three-day event that starts... The actual day is Monday, and you can celebrate a couple days leading up to it. Most people put Halloween and Dia in the same, you know, 24 hours. So, um, anyway, so that's what we're doing today. And we are going to be making um, something really special to me. And um, we are going to be making chocolate covered pretzels. And I'm going to tell you that story when we get back. We are going to go ahead and toss this over to Pilar, who's over in the next room, because she has a really special drink to celebrate today. Oh, first, uh, you want to hit that with Sandra Valls? Please only put pictures of people that have died. No living people in the picture. November 1st, children and pets. November 2nd, adult. Oh, Sandra. Okay. So, so, so on your altar, um, you want to make sure that you don't put any photos of people living. Okay. November 1st, children and pets. November 2nd, adults. Hey, Sandra, thank you for that. I appreciate that. We have a little ofrenda that we make. Travis made a, a little one for us. And... Um, so we, I never knew that. Thank you so much. You learn more and more every day. Pan dulce mm -hmm. and Mexican chocolate. Eva, stay tuned. You're going to love what we're doing. The marigolds are uh, aromatic, so it leads the souls to your house. The marigolds have a very strong scent. Some people love it. Some people don't. It's a very earthy scent. So I forgot. Sandra Valls is um, in ministry, she's so she knows, she knows these things. Yeah. I give workshops and prayer circles on this, Sandra. And she sings like crazy Sandra, this Saturday. Yeah. Karaoke. Would you mind, Sandra, if people had more questions, if they could put it in the comments and you could answer? Because that would be yeah, fabulous. That would be awesome. So uh, I'm sure she would say yes because she's that kind of a generous person. So if you have any questions, please uh, put it in the comments and we will field those through Sandra. So are you ready, Pilar? Without further ado, let's bring in Pilar's Pouring with Pilar. Skiddly doo dee doo da ba dee da dee Pouring with Pilar. She's a barista. Hi guys, welcome back to Pouring with Pilar. Um, I'm Pilar, this is my bar, and over here we express ourselves in the kitchen through making drinks, but we also celebrate things. And today we are celebrating Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. Um, I'm a little out of breath, because I got really excited throughout the intro. But, <laughs> Day of the Dead is a holiday that my family has only recently established in their household but it's a very 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 popular holiday in a lot of mexican households um, it is a holiday rooted in aztec tradition it also has key elements of uh, spanish catholicism and it's in a very very famous movie that you definitely know coco 
So, Day of the Dead, if you don't already know what it is, essentially it's a day where we honor our loved ones who have passed on by creating an altar for them. It's an altar that is supposed to guide them home and also comfort their souls upon arrival so that you can celebrate them for the rest of the evening. Now, altars traditionally have things like pictures of the loved ones who have passed on, candles to help light their way, the marigolds to help guide them over, uh, things like salt for purification, pan de muerte, which is very, very expensive uh, Mexican bread. And it also has ofrendas, which are um, food and drink offerings to help comfort the soul and like replenish them upon their arrival. And that's what we're gonna be working with today. We're gonna be making a teeny abstract ofrenda. Now, a quick disclaimer. This is a very, very beautiful and a rich, rich holiday. And so I wanna treat this with a little bit of reverence, a little bit of respect, and I want to pay homage to this holiday. I don't wanna make a mockery out of it. So while I am taking key elements of it, this is not an official celebration of Dia de los Muertos. So let's get started making our drink and you'll see what I'm talking about when I say I'm gonna build an ofrenda. So what I'm gonna get started with is I have my ice in my little cup already. And over here I have, it's now cold, Mexican hot chocolate. Mexican hot chocolate tastes like home to me. It is hot chocolate made with cocoa, milk, um, cayenne I think it is, and then like chili powder and vanilla extract. So today I'm using the instant one, but if you were like OG, you have definitely seen this brick before. This is the Abuelita Hot Chocolate Brick. And if you've used this before, you definitely know that struggle of like trying to chop it down and then like saute it in the milk or whatever. Saute is not the right word. But this is kind of a pain in the butt to use. This, you get the same taste for so much easier. So I have the packets already brewed. It's already cold and I'm going to pour it into my cup. It's so thick. And you'll see why we're doing it ice. We're gonna need that ice to help keep the ofrenda afloat. Alrighty, I'm gonna put that guy off to the side. Now, um, Dia de los Muertos is sometimes celebrated in cemeteries. You'll go to the cemetery, you'll put the food and the candles and the pictures and everything right directly on the um, headstone. So we're gonna be taking inspiration from that and I crushed up some Oreos to represent like the dirt. It's not a key element in the uh, altar, but it's delicious, I love it. I remember one time, <laughs> Denise, if you're watching, you'll definitely remember this. We were working with my cousin and some of the children that she was working with, and we made them little chocolate pudding cups with this dirt and then some gummy worms and everything. And this one little boy, without missing a beat, was just, is this real dirt? And just, he wouldn't stop eating it. And we looked at him and we're like, no. <laughs> and like, cool, cool, cool. And he just kept eating it. And I think about that every time I see Oreos and it just, it gives me a chuckle. It gives me a laugh. So I'm gonna be tossing some Oreos directly on top. And I'm using reusable ice today, which is why they are so chunky. I mean, aren't we all after this year? <laughs> if you guys watched the Halloween episode, I, I embraced it. I loved it. And this drink will only make you chonkier. So I have packed on my Oreos. If you guys go to um, boba shops, it's also a really popular um, boba tea to get the potted plant milk tea. And so they often use Oreo crumbles on the top to give it that dirt effect. And then they'll just put a little leaf in there and you have your own potted plant milk tea. But today we're not making that, we're making an ofrenda. Next, I'm going to use, I have clean hands, so I'm just going to smooth it out, and I'm going to be taking my marigolds. You remember how earlier I said that the marigolds were the flowers that would bring the um, dead to their altars? Well, it's also why in Coco, they have a whole bridge. Oh my god, do you guys remember that scene? It took so many animators to create that scene because it was just so beautiful. The marigolds, the yellow ones that I have over here, represent death, and it's what's most commonly used to bring the souls back to um, their homes. So I'm using, <laughs> I, I thought it would be a great idea to chop up some candy corn, and it was, 
until they all stuck together because they're made with honey. So I chopped them all up, kind of crumbled them with my hands, and then tossed them in cornstarch to keep them from sticking with each other. But alas, I did not do a great job. But we're going to roll with it because it's pouring with Pilar, and uh, we don't care. We just like the way it tastes. So I'm going to be making a teeny little bridge towards about the center of it. And it's so hard because they're like all stuck together, you guys. <laughs> uh, I should have added a disclaimer that this is a very, very, very sweet drink. A very sweet drink. Not only does it have the Oreos, it has the chocolate, uh, you know, the iced chocolate. It has the candy corn. And then it's going to have my favorite ingredient coming up. But it is very, very sweet. Might be a little bit hard to modify if you're diabetic or if you're watching your sugar. I'm watching my sugar, so I'm only gonna be drinking like one of these all year. So if you can see, I made the tiny bridge of marigolds about halfway through the cup. And now I'm going to be adding the ofrenda portion. I'm going to be using chocolate covered espresso beans. Um, this is paying homage to two different people. Um, sorry, I got distracted. This is paying homage to two different people. One is my grandpa on my mom's side who loved, loved, loved coffee. He would chug a venti like it was like a, a shot. Like he loved coffee that much. And we're also paying homage to our dear late friend, Paul, who used to snack on these guys like crazy. So these are chocolate covered espresso beans to pay honor to both of them. Let me show you guys real quick. They look like little, little chocolate chips. We actually um, tossed these in chocolate earlier this morning. I'm going to drop a couple in the middle and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like, if you can see. So those are the chocolate espresso beans, that's the candy corn, and this is our tiny ofrenda. I'm gonna mix it up just a bit so I don't get a Oreo mustache. And let's uh, try it. Oh, that's sweet, oh, that's good. Oh, that's sweet. Oh. Mm. That's good. Sorry, I shouldn't talk. Oh. It was my first time ever, like, taking a drink of it. But that is really good, especially with the chocolate-covered espresso beans. That sharpness and that bitterness and the robust flavor kind of tones down all that sugar that you're drinking. So while you're still drinking that sugar, it doesn't taste like it. And there you go. That is your coco inspired coco so let me know if you guys are celebrating dia de los muertos um i'm not the gatekeeper if you are not of mexican descent don't worry you can still celebrate this holiday but like i said at the top of this it is a holiday that should be treated with a lot of reverence a lot of respect and you're paying homage you're paying honor to some of the fallen uh or people who have passed away in your life so thank you so much for letting me make this for you guys i hope you have a great day stay safe stay soapy i love you bye skiddly doo deedly doo da ba dee da dee pouring with pilar she's a barista wow that drink looks really so really good. tasty very sweet i don't know if i would do the um the espresso beans this late at night but definitely tomorrow, I would love to have one of those, Pilar. So you can make me one for tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't she adorable, She's you guys? So cute. Um, well, um, and those of you who want to go back into the comments, Sandra Valls uh, has been very thorough in her answers. Anna Maria Kahnemacher sent out a question there about the three stages of death. And uh, so she's explaining it right there in the comments. So please, if you want to know more about this, please look at the comments of Sandra Valls in the comment section who is explaining it so beautifully. And speaking of comments, um, if you are on YouTube, all of the comments from all the platforms are shown there if you click and go live on that video. So that's kind of a, a good way to go and experience what other people are saying because if you're on my Facebook page, you might not see what's going on with Debbie's Facebook page. Those comments though too, but on YouTube you can. And um, Okay. Why not put pigs of living with the dead? Our so Peggy wants yeah. to know why not put pigs of living with the dead? 
So that would be a Sandra Valls question. So Sandra, can or you answer that? Why not put pics of the living with the dead? And Monica Casares, she said on, if you scroll up and look at the comments, Monica, Sandra said that there are, oh my gosh, look at all this information she's giving here. Wow. Yeah. So um, the pets are on a certain day. Yeah. Wow. And Sandra is giving a really detailed explanation of this. Um, you know, it, it is a very, uh, like Pilar said, we want to be reverent, we want to be respectful, and ultimately make things that, like Sandra has just said, whatever the deceased person likes. So in this case, we're making pretzels. We're making chocolate covered pretzels. Caramel wrapped, Show caramel people. wrapped chocolate covered pretzels. My friend Paul, who I love very much, I loved him so much, I still do. And Paul um, was the manager over at Brad Garrett's Comedy Club and he was a dear friend for years. And I had so much fun with him, so much fun, thank you. And um, Gotta stir this when he up. was, when he was, um, his last phone call to me, um, it was so, so interesting and he was in good spirits. And I kind of think that's what, that's kind of something nature gives us is before our loved ones pass on, they get this moment of clarity so that they can talk to you. And Paul certainly had that moment of clarity. And at one point he said, I'm really scared. And I said, what are you scared of? And he said, I'm scared I'll never get another cigar or chocolate pretzel from you. And these were Paul's favorite snack. Paul would love to eat these chocolate covered pretzels. So because of him, I am making these just for in memory of Paul and we're going to be giving them away to family and friends so that they can enjoy them as well and so these are chocolate covered pretzels awesome um so um so anyway so you take your you take these pretzel rods you want to get the big thick pretzel rods because they're going to have to hold up to a lot of candy and then you get some caramel and you can buy caramel in like a brick or a cake uh, or at candy stores, we'll sometimes just have it in like a little Tupperware oh, container. Like this, this this container. Yeah, yeah. So if if you don't have a candy store around, can you you can probably get this on Amazon. Oh, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Walmart. So it's just caramel, and you make it really um, pliable. Pliable. So you roll and roll and roll. And so I don't mean to be moving on, but this is a time sensitive kind of thing to make. Yeah. So um, I am so um, Sandra, you got a question there. She's on it. She's on it. Bruce, okay. we're gonna we're gonna dip these in the Instapot uh, in just a second. Where's Bruce? <laughs> All right, with it. Is the Instapot gone? We're gonna do more Instapot. Oh, Paula. At some point soon. I didn't mean to make you cry. You know we love we love him so much. So you got so, your pretzel rods and your and your. So what I did is I took some candy melts and I put them in a microwave oven. Um, if you're using your regular microwave oven that everybody else is using, clean it out. Use some baking soda in there, get it real clean because especially white chocolate will pick up taste and smell. I have a chocolate microwave oven. That's just for chocolate. We bought that just <laughs> so we can use that for, for her chocolate dipping and So um, we have melted some dark chocolate here and I'm gonna send Travis to go microwave the white chocolate. Travis is gonna microwave this on high power the, for 40 seconds and then he's gonna pull it out he's gonna give it a little stir he's gonna put it back in there for 30 seconds so he will be okay. uh, in charge of doing that meanwhile I'm gonna go ahead and start dipping these pretzels they've already been wrapped these pretzels have a long shelf life they have a shelf life of about um, six weeks um, now you can do these pretzels for any holiday I wouldn't do them for a spring or a summer holiday because they don't take the heat very well. Uh, they will melt fast. And um, all you do is you just change the color of jimmies or sprinkles. And you um, can do a Halloween like we're going to do tonight. You can do a Thanksgiving. You can do Christmas jimmies. You can do, I think for my uh, son-in-law, I even did Steeler pretzels in the black and the gold. You can do your sports. You can do blue and white for Go Dodgers Go. Um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, once this chocolate is melted and you start dipping these pretzels in here and coating them, you can't put this chocolate back in the microwave because now it's picked up salt crystals and those salt crystals will do something completely different to your, 
your chocolate. So all I'm doing now is I'm just coating these and as I coat them, as I coat them, see my, my pretzels there? I go back and forth and let the drippings like this go on there to just kind of give it a little texture. So we've got just the handheld cam here, so we'll show what you're doing. Yeah, I'm just dipping, and then I do this. And this is all done on parchment paper. Okay, one more time with just the pretzel. Sure. And Sandra, thank you so much for answering these questions. Um, we get to see such a fun and silly side to Sandra, so it's so exciting to see her spiritual side and her and the knowledge that she's giving us. There you go. Yep. Okay. Now 30 seconds. Now what? 10? See how they are? Oh yeah, they're not done yet. Okay. Then do another 10. The idea to melting these is you want to melt them slowly. You don't want to put it in there for two minutes. Your chocolate will seize. When chocolate seizes, it does that. It just stops any kind of progression and just becomes this big blech of chocolate. So um, you want to melt it slowly. 10 seconds, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. 20 seconds. If you're there all the time, you know, doing it, trust me, it's worth it. Um, Sandra said that, um, uh, I'm sorry, Christina said, I love your pretzels. If you know me, you've gotten one of my pretzels. Okay, and Sandra answers, we don't put pictures you, of Trevor. living because this is like inviting the living to join the ancestors before their time, and we don't want that. So what you're doing by putting the photos up, is you're you're inviting them you're saying you are remembered and you're inviting them back in with your offering of the food that they really liked so that's why you don't put uh, living so i'm just continuing to do this i'm a priestess of yamaya in the yorba religion thank you so much thank you sandra um, here's the white is it all ready to go i think it is what do you think pretty good mm. I 10 would, seconds must? No, no. Like I would do three seconds. Three. Three seconds. I know it sounds crazy, you guys, but it, I've learned a lot making these pretzels over the years. If he threw it in there for another 10 seconds, the chocolate would seize. Again, you want to do it low and slow. Low and slow. You can also melt chocolate in a double broiler. Um, how is it? You tell me, lady. All right. Seems nice and... Uh... Mixy. That's it's the consistency you're looking for? It's still a little thick, so here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I have something called paraffin wax crystals. And paraffin wax crystals are exactly that. They just add a little bit of shine to chocolate and they'll thin it out. Sure you don't want to put water. You don't want to put milk. You want to use this or even some Crisco but you absolutely don't want to put water in there. Water and chocolate are not a good mix. All these are are little paraffin crystals like this. You can get this at any candy store. Paraffin so, crystals and you can eat that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. paraffin so is I'm wax. So not, I'm not going to put in a whole bunch. I'm just putting in a drop or two. Okay. See how that... Yeah. I literally put in maybe a quarter teaspoon of that and it, it thinned it out real beautifully. So I'm going to continue to dip my chocolate pretzels in this and I'm using a dark cocoa for this one. Get it? Cocoa's cocoa. Ha ha ha. Cocoa. All right. For, um, and then you're going to use this. I'm going to keep stirring this because keep stirring. you've got to keep stirring this yeah. otherwise it'll do what? Seize. Seize. Seize candy. Uh -huh. Get it? The candy seize. You're so funny. Um... Uh, these pretzels are a labor of love. They're a fun treat to make. You can personalize them. Um, They're very delicious. You just need one. So if you think you're going to gorge on these, you probably won't. Maybe the first two or three times, five or six times or seven times, maybe eight or nine times you'll gorge or 12 times. I'm going to put a little, I put a little bit more of the paraffin crystals so that I have this consistency. Yeah, let's okay. do it. All right. So, and then I have a slot, a spoon that is slotted. I don't, you can't see it because there's chocolate all over it. Let's show that. Do this. Hold it up. Oh, yes. Okay. That's slotted. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my chocolate ones and I'm just going to put a little bit of there. And Travis, you washed your hands, right? Can you wash your hands again because you've been touching your phone? Hell no. 
Wash your hands. Tony, how to live my life. Do it. Because you get a fun part right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does it involve eating some of that? No. How am I not paying extra for this on Netflix? Love your headband. Thank you, BG. That's actually my headband. She wouldn't let me wear it tonight. <laughs> she wanted to borrow it. I'm not trying to, I'm not showing any disrespect to the culture uh, by, you know, appropriating their culture. I really do love these flowers and I think it's just such a pretty touch and any time in a world when we can add a little beauty, heck, why not? When you say appropriating culture, you mean the Mexican culture? Well, I mean that, you know, yeah, but... You're Mexican, though. <laughs> Come put a little more white on here. Are your hands clean? I just washed them. Are they dry? I touched any. Okay, let's make sure no, they're nice and dry. not actually dry. Because... They have to be 100% dry? 100% dry because... Um, Oh, I'll use the uh, sugar skull one. Okay, so what I have here is I just have Jimmy's. Again, Jimmy's can come in any kind of... Okay. Um, these are ghosts and bats and uh, some purple little Jimmy's and some orange Jimmy's. You can, they, they, you can do anything. There's little turkeys for Thanksgiving. There's, of course, everything in Christmas. I wouldn't use a flavored Jimmy. I wouldn't use like a mint or peppermint or crush up candy cane or use granulated sugars like, you know, colored sugars. I would stick to this because it just gives these, uh, it's just perfect for these pretzels. So, Travis, this is going to be your job. Okay. You get to do Can that. Can I do it like the fancy salt? Yes, but <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> This. While you're doing that, and then can you grab those no, when you're ready? No, because I wanted to get, I would keep doing that because I'm stupid like that. But I don't want to waste these jimmies. I want them to be on the candy. Okay. Now, tell the people, if they go to a candy store, what can they expect to pay for something like this? Okay, I just had a conversation with somebody about this. Yes, the candy store will probably charge you 99 cents an ounce for the Jimmies. You can get them at the regular grocery store right there in the birthday aisle. You can get, you know, any color that you want. You know where I got some of this no, stuff? Those two? Yes, please. I got uh, a lot of this at Big Lots. Big Lots right now has all kinds of stuff in their baking section. Um, so, um, hi, Monica. She says I, she loves my hair. How are you appropriating? Yeah, you know what? I didn't think I was, but sometimes Pilar makes me feel like, you know, like, Mom. Oh, stop but it. I get that for everything with Pilar. Mom. Mama. She's your favorite. She, <laughs> she, she's so funny. When she leaves the house, we're hey, like, Hey, Giovanni. Who, who, who? Hi, Giovanni. Hi guys, we love when people learn and make our culture part of theirs. Yes. Thank you. Can everybody give Giovanni right. a hand? He is a frontline worker. We are so proud to have a nurse in the family, I'm telling you. And I know that it's not easy. Thank you so much for doing what you do. And yeah, I think that this is such a lovely way to remember and to honor people by making the dishes that they loved. So, um... You know, maybe you can do that on Monday. Maybe there's a dish of a family member that, you know, they loved. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be, you know, my dad loved, my dad loved cafecito. My dad loved his coffee, you know. And um, I know that your friend who passed away, Travis, Jason, that you guys used to love to drink instant coffee. We would pour, his mom sent him um, uh, care packages all the time with this, this instant coffee. This is when coffee. they were Marines. Yeah, when we were on uh, the USS Tarawa in the Persian Gulf, um, send care packages with this delicious instant coffee. I don't even remember what, what um, brand it was, but we would put it in those Gatorade water bottles, Gatorade bottles, and drink all day long, just coffee all day. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it, you know, it doesn't have to be a certain food. My dad loved popcorn, just plain popcorn with salt. Loved it. Remember that, Monica? He would have his big bowl of popcorn every night. So I did these in white. And now, Travis, um, I'm going to give you another fun job here. Okay. But we have to move at the same time here. Oh, uh, so I can't film it close up. Uh, no, what not you. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna have some fun with a rolling pin. 
All right. So these are Reese's pieces. M and M's work well. When you say something like Reese's that. pieces work well. The reason I'm doing Reese's pieces is because it's kind of a Halloween or Thanksgiving color for candy. So you're gonna um, now, Fab. You don't want to powder them. You just want to kind of uh, crunch them up crunch so them that up. they're you know about Jimmy size. Yeah. No. No. Bigger than Jimmy. Where's your rolling pin? You, right there. Ah. You got chocolate all over okay. it too. It's all right. Where am I putting it? Uh, you know you what, I'm going to slide these up front so perfect. that people can see a little closer. So, yeah. Here, give me that. You yeah. said I could do it, don't you? Um, I love what... what um, I'm going to do it over here since I'm probably blowing Sandra's ear out. I love what Eva just said. You guys are making me laugh during these t trying times. I love it. Thank you. That's what we're here for. We know things are crazy out there. And not everybody is an L.A. Dodger fan, although L.A. had some great news coming the other day with the Dodgers. But we know everybody could use a little lift up now and then. So thank you for mentioning that, Eva. We have fun. Rhea saying hello to Giovanni. Uh, I can't see Giovanni. Please add me. <laughs> well, that's because um, Giovanni is on YouTube watching. And, Monica, you are watching on Facebook. So, Monica, I don't know if you got on here too late when Travis said that you go to, um, you can go to YouTube to see everybody's. On YouTube, all of the comments are there. And for some reason it says restream, stupid, but um, but you can see all the comments there from everyone. Do you want to yes, go ahead? Yes, Sandra, and... ASMR. That's why I moved back there for you. You've got to do some catch up on Pilar's, um, pouring with Pilar. She keeps going, ASMR, Sandra, ASMR, yeah, Sandra. She's always talking to you, Sandra. So what am I doing? Same, going... same thing? Yeah. Go ahead. All right, let's do this. And the reason you want to do this, go ahead, baby. The reason you want to do this while the chocolate is still wet so that that candy adheres. Good. Oh, my God. Aren't they pretty? This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is one of my favorite candies, Reese's Pieces. And uh, Danny, who was here on Tuesday, pointed out a very uh, important truth about this. After about the first handful, these taste horrible. So my suggestion is you get a little ramekin. You get a handful, a serving size, put it in the ramekin, and eat them one by one. Crack the shells. It's delicious, and you won't get tired of them. Now, this is looking real good. Yeah, you did a good job. Now, the part of the problem with what we experience on this uh, is when we go to bag them up, all the chocolate you have to cut through to make it thin enough unless you get the wider bags. Let me show right here. Okay. So, bags can come in three inches or two inches. I try to get the bigger ones when I can. Okay. What happens is when you lift these, I'm not going to lift it because it's still wet, is do you... I showed them. Here, let me do this one. <laughs> now do this one. You're making me Don't... crazy. Oh, it's upside down. Okay. You, so you punched me and I was What happens down. is if we lift this pretzel, all that chocolate's going to just kind of... Ugh. Now some people make these on baking, uh, cooking sheets, you know, where cooling sheets, where they have the little... Um, it's like... Um, a graph. What do I it's want to grate. say? It's a grate. It's a grate. So that they're just, you know, right there. I can't even explain it. Well, why don't I just get it out and show them? Okay. Betty? But not it's us. Handy. We like to have the pretzels so that when we take them off, look at this. The, the... Oh, it's good. What are you doing, baby? I'm going to show them. I'm going to show you on a broken pretzel. Yes, I have broken pretzels. Because why let that stop you? And sometimes people can't have a whole pretzel. Well, All tell right. them also about uh, getting, if they go to a candy store. See, some people do it on one of these. They, they drain, they uh, pour them on over one of these. Hold it up so they and can then see it. you're losing all that wonderful chocolate. Why would you want to lose oh, it? Oh, it'll fall through. Right. Yeah, no, don't do that. So this is what we come up with. If you can see, there's the pretzel in the back. See how it's got like a, cut, like a quarter inch on each side there? Oh, yummy, right? Yeah, you don't want to lose um, all that. Yeah, and don't worry if you have broken pretzels. First of all, broken pretzels make a great snack. Second of all, sometimes they just make a little mini like this. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, Eva, my family loved... Um, past family loved enchilada. Enchilada that's made with love. Yeah. Oh, can you and Travis be more in love? <laughs> I don't know. Jury's out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um... So anyway, okay. I don't know so why I said that. we're gonna let these 
stay at room temperature. Some people put them in the refrigerator or the freezer. I don't. Chocolate doesn't always love that ice cold and it will turn on you kind of weird. Um, so, and the pretzels, the pretzels don't like that cold. Once they get wet, they, you know, it's just not the same pretzel. So, um, look at this, a family reunion. So what I did is I got these fabulous little bags for pretzels mm -hmm. right here. And they always come with little twist ties. My experience is these twist ties don't work great that come with it. So I buy my own twist ties again at the candy store. And so you can get these in any color. And you wrap them up and this is what you come up with. Yes. And then you can give them to family and friends. There you go. Um, some people like to freeze these and eat them frozen yeah. cold. I don't know if that'd be great. No, Hi, Martha. So glad that to for see you Charleston here. Juice. Yeah. So um, you hold it up like this would be better because yeah, like that. You do it. Just do it. Wow. <laughs> Every one of my friends saw you do that to me. I think we're quarantined too long. Like this. <laughs> like this. Isn't that better? Oh, okay. Let me try it. Let me try no. it. Let me see if no. I can do it. Get out of here. Ready? Yeah, do it now. Like this? <laughs> like this? Why do like I put up this? with you? Why do I put like up with this? you? Like this? Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, so these are the chocolate covered pretzels. I'm going to leave them out for a couple hours. And usually I do all this by myself. And because... there will be hundreds <laughs> of them on the, the dining table behind the camera there. I mean hundreds, probably 200 sometimes. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. And then this guy comes along and he picks them up off the parchment paper, paper and then he trims them down so they fit. And then he puts them in the bag and ties them off. So yeah. we do like a little assembly line. This is a really great gift for Christmas time. Or if you're having, um, you know, a get together, a family event or a function, or even if you just want to make some and give it as a, a professional gift. Yeah. And there are a lot of reasons why this works, but they're delicious and everyone loves them. Yeah, and you know what I love? I love they're individually wrapped. So you can take them to the office. You can you can take them to a party because nobody wants candy that everybody's touched, right? So it's individually wrapped. A lot of people just want to take one. They don't even want to eat it. Like, oh, it's too pretty. I don't even want to eat it. Um, so did you get the pricing? Because I know you started yet. to. Not yet, but do you want to taste one of these? Do you want the Reese's Have Pieces we one? <laughs> you want the Reese's Pieces? Are you new? You want the Reese's yes, Pieces? Yes, I want to taste okay. it. Okay. Oh my God. You guys, I'm going to do this. Hang on. This is what she just handed me. Oh, look at that goodness right there. All those. And that's, uh, this, this is a smaller pretzel. So um, I'm going to give this a taste. Mmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> you did this so I would stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> There's caramel in there. Uh, don't forget the caramel's wrapped up in there. So every bite, you know what people say it tastes like? Like a Twix bar. Um, yeah, that's exactly what that tastes yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, God. I love how everybody so is having good. it. How, explain how you remove the parchment paper without them being stuck together. Um, when it cools down, it just peels off yeah. of the parchment paper. These seem, do it like this. these seem a little cool. This. So I'm going to pick them up. See, Peggy, I'm picking it up like this. You want to do it carefully. See how it's got all this. That's what Travis goes back and he um, trims off. Trims off. Now, Peggy, if stuff. you have a soldier that goes down, that's where that's where these come in. <laughs> When you have a little soldier that breaks on the parchment paper, usually, you know, you lose one or two little soldiers. And that's why you keep these. I put them in a cookie tin, and that's mm. what my family enjoys. And also, you buy the broken pretzels at the store? No, they give you the broken. Oh. Well, where I go, I go to A&J Candy Supply, and they'll give you a bag of broken pretzels um, if you're buying a bunch. So, Peggy, just lift real carefully. Um, if you want to go in with a paring knife and kind of chip away at that chocolate, you can do that too. Yeah, but yeah. you probably won't need to. Yeah. And the way I see it, 
all that extra gooey chocolate on the sides, the more the better. So if you're going to get those little bags, maybe get the wider ones so all that fits in there because the more the better. Also, a way to eat it, some people say, is they take the pretzel out. They take the pretzel out of the bag and um, they turn it upside down. You know you're so going to they... have to eat that if you take that out of there. No, my hands are still clean. So you take you know, it out. I'm going to have to eat that. You, you take it that. out. And then the way you eat it is you drop it back in this way and you eat it so all the candy falls into the bag. Mm -hmm. So the reason I make these again is because my sweet friend Paul Ames, who I love very, 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 very much, um, passed away and this was his favorite treat. So I make these every year. Whenever I would go to Brad Garrett's club out at the MGM, I would take um, Paul a cigar and a chocolate covered pretzel and would leave it right there by his picture. So um, yeah, it's a beautiful way to remember him. So nice Dia de los Muertos sí. celebration. And, and uh, in closing, we're going to run some pictures of Paul. Yeah, you we'll just kind of go now? through a few. Can sure. I talk over them? You sure can. So here's pictures of Paul. That's me with Paul at the MGM. He was like my best manager ever. Such a sweet guy. That's us at a radio station. He would take me to radio every Tuesday morning. And um, this is Paul with Paula. Paula, that's you with Paul. They were such sweethearts. They still are. That's her with her Paul again. Look at that. There he is right there. I just love that picture of Paul. That's a great shot. It's a beautiful shot. There he is with his brother, Brad Garrett, um, at their his favorite restaurant, Islands. There he is with Suzanne, who, um, and there he is with Brad again. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne actually does something called Pause for Paul, P-A-W-S. Paul was in hospice, and as he was passing, he needed help with his animals. And you forget people in hospice, sometimes they're leaving behind their pets. And so what Nathan Adelson Hospice Foundation, where Paul was, what they did is they had volunteers go and take care of people's pets. They would walk them, feed them, water them, care for them while their owners were sick. And so if you wanna make a donation, for pause for Paul, it specifically goes to people who volunteer to make that happen for people who are in, po in hospice, mm -hmm. and that is through uh, Nathan Adelson Hospice Foundation. In so, yeah, I just put up a lower third. It's a long one. Most of you are on devices. You can screen cap it or snap a photo if you're watching this on your TV. Just snap a photo of that address. It's uh, NHA, NAH, sorry, dot org. Get involved, Nathan Adelson Hospice Foundation, pause for Paul, and that way you can get involved in this really amazing charitable foundation. Yeah, and um, like I said, when he said he was scared he would never get a chocolate pretzel from me again, I make sure that Paul gets his chocolate covered pretzels every year. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for inviting us to your kitchen table. Thank you for coming into our kitchen. Please don't forget our good friends Sandra and Connie Valls will be having their Halloween party at... Uh, 7 p.m. Central. I'm going to do this again. Look at that. Look at those two cuties. So cute. <laughs> this is Sandra Valls, the, the priestess the who has been giving us all this wonderful information. <laughs> look, at, look at the one in the middle. <laughs> Their doll in the back has the eye things. <laughs> so they do four hours of karaoke, and um, they just have such a great time, and you'll have a good time watching them, and um, you'll even see each other. There's a lot of people that leave our kitchen and go right into their playroom. So we love you so much. Um, take care of each other. We'll see you on a week from tonight. We'll be um, skipping out on Tuesday. Go vote. Go vote. Go vote. Republican, independent, Democrat, make your voice heard. Too many people have sacrificed far too much for us to sit on our couch and not vote. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Cooking with Debbie and friends. Love you too, Dan. Debbie and friends. Bye. Hey, how do you like that jack-o'-lantern I carved? I love it. I like it too. It's so pretty.